So we're going to go through a couple of examples of proof by deduction in this video. So let's have a look at this first one. For any four consecutive integers, the difference between the product of the last two and the product of the first two of these numbers is equal to their sum. Now, there's a lot of words in this sentence, so we've got to break it down slightly just to help us out here. So the first bit, for any four consecutive integers, OK? So let's label them. Let's call the first one n, and the second one n plus 1, and the third one n plus 2, and the fourth one n plus 3. So here are my four consecutive integers. So it says the difference between the product of the last two. So we've got to find the product of the last two. OK, so n plus 2, n plus 3, times them together. And the product of the first two. So we're going to multiply these two. So we want the difference between these two things. Now, difference is a subtraction. So what we want is this. OK, that's what we want to find. n plus 2, n plus 3, take away n, n plus 1. The difference between the product of the last two and the product of the first two. And we want to show that this is going to be equal to their sum. So this is the first one to have a look at. So we're going to expand those brackets out. n squared plus 5n plus 6. And we've got n squared. And we've got a minus n times 1, so minus n. So the n squareds are going to cancel. We've got 5n take away n, so 4n. And we've got that plus 6. So let's see if that's equal to their sum. Now, the sum is just adding all four of those together. So n plus n plus 1 plus n plus 2 plus n plus 3. So we've got n, 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 and n, so four n's. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. OK, so clearly we have shown that, so this is true. So we've shown that the difference between the product of the last two and the first two is exactly the same as the sum of the four numbers. OK? So we have shown this algebraically in this case. So let's have a look at the next one, number two. So number two is a little bit more tricky. And it says k cubed minus k is divisible by 6 for all integers k greater than 1. So if we have a look at that k cubed minus k, that looks like something that can be factorised. OK, so that's my instinct here. My natural urge is to factorise that to make it easier for us to see what's going to happen next. So I'm going to factor out the k, and I'm going to get k squared minus 1 inside that bracket. Then, if I factorise that bracket, that's the difference of two squares. So that's k times k minus 1 times k plus 1. Now, by itself, this isn't looking very helpful until I write it in a slightly different order. So if I write the k minus 1 bracket first, and I'm multiplying that by k, and then I'm multiplying that by k plus 1, if we think about what k is, <coughs> k is an integer greater than 1, that means what we've got here is actually the product of three consecutive integers. Because there's k, there's one less than k, there's one greater than k. So this could be 2, 3, 4, for example, or 100, 101, 102. So 
we've got here the product of three consecutive integers. So really, number two is really asking, show that the product of three consecutive integers is divisible by six. Now, if we've got three consecutive integers, then we've either got even, odd, even, or odd, even, odd. In either case, at least one of them, of those three integers, will be even. So, at least one will be even. So, if at least one of them is even, then that means the whole thing must have a factor of 2. So, therefore, it must be, so k cubed minus k must be divisible by 2. It must have 2 as a factor. Now, with that in place, because we've got three consecutive integers, at least one of them, well, at least one is probably really the wrong wording here, precisely one of them will be a multiple of three. Because the three times table goes up in threes. So if I'm going up in three number slots, one, two, three, two, three, four, uh, three, four, five. I will always hit a number that is in the three times table. So one must be um, a multiple of three. So that means that k cubed minus k must be divisible by three. Which means, if I had this, I would be able to pull out the 2, factor out the 2, factor out the 3, and so, because it's divisible by both 2 and 3, it must be divisible by 6. So, uh, divisible by 2 and 3 means k cubed minus k must be divisible by 6. OK? And that, as you can see, went from an algebraic expression that we were considering to a worded logical argument as to why uh, k cubed minus k had to be divisible by 6. So, don't think that you automatically have to do everything that is proved by deduction algebraically. Some of them can just be explained uh, by words. Okay, so make sure that you know you're comfortable doing that.